Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to honor the life and legacy of a North Carolina legend, former U.S. Senator and Congressman James T. Broyhill, who passed away on February 18th at the age of 95. Jim Broyhill will be remembered as one of the political giants in the history of North Carolina, especially for those of us from the western part of the state that he so ably, uh, with distinction, uh, represented for over two decades. A native of Lenore, Broyhill served in several executive capacities in his family's furniture industry, Broyhill Industries, prior to entering public service. He was first elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1962 as a long-shot candidate. Broyhill, a Republican, pulled off a narrow one-point victory at a time when North Carolina politics uh, was dominated by the Democratic Party. He quickly won the hearts of his constituents and served the people of Western North Carolina in this house until 1986. Broyhill liked to tell a story from his first election, an occurrence that had an impact on him and taught him an important lesson in dealing with people. Table Rock is a beautiful and distinct mountain in Burke County, North Carolina, uh, one that I am proud to represent, and one that Broyhill could see each day from his home in Lenore. Out, out on the campaign trail one day, he drove around to the other side of the mountain and stopped at a small country store. He greeted the owner of that little store and said, how are things on the back side of Table Rock today? To which the owner replied, who says, this is the back side. Uh, he said he learned that day the importance of meeting people where they are and that his perspective might not always be shared by someone else. A lesson, you know, all of us here in the house and in Washington could be wise to hear and to learn. Broyhill loved his constituents and the feeling was mutual. He took a personal interest acknowledging special events with a note or a phone call. He and his beloved wife, Louise, published the immensely popular congressional cookbook with recipes such as capital bean soup and heaven cake. But the real impact he made in Congress was as a landmark legislator. In the House, he sat on the Small Business Committee, the Post Office, and Civil Service Committee, and for many years was the ranking member of the Interstate and Foreign Commerce Committee, which we now call the Energy and Commerce Committee. President Reagan credit, uh, credited Senator Broyhill as being a key force in the 1985 tax reform package and the 1978 legislation that allowed cable companies to connect to existing utility poles that led to the explosive growth in cable television and communication. And in the 10th Congressional District that I'm proud to represent, it led to a boom in fiber optic manufacturing jobs that communities are still benefiting from today. It was then coaxial cable, fiber today. He always prioritized constituent service at home and was truly a pioneer in that regard. At a time when district offices were deemed to be of lesser importance to many on the Hill, uh, then Congressman Broyhill kept his district offices fully staffed by trained professionals who were always ready to help with whatever issues his constituents had with federal agencies. That is something that I learned from him. His district became North Carolina's 10th congressional district in 1969, and I'm only the third representative from that district since then. His successor, Cass Ballinger, learned the art of constituent service from the Broyhill staff, and I, in turn, learned from Ballinger's staff some of whom still work in my Hickory District office today. Jim Broyhill served in the United States Senate in the summer of 1986, serving the unexpired term of the late Senator John East. After his time in elective office ended, Broyhill continued to work on behalf of the people of North Carolina. He put his extensive business experience to use by serving as North Carolina's Secretary of Commerce and the Chairman of the North Carolina Economic Development Commission. The post office in his beloved hometown of Lenore it was named after him, a well-deserved recognition. I could go on at length about his other accomplishments in public life and business and certainly his long record in philanthropy. Let me just say this, that he lived his life well, always in service to others and our state and our nation, and we're all much better for his service to it. I'm grateful on behalf of my constituents, the people of North Carolina, and a grateful na nation, I extend condolences to Senator Broyhill's family as they mourn. I yield back.